Ladies and gentlemen, I'm playing with Chunk again. Today we are talking about reactive power or blind power. Some people call it like that or blind current, reactive current. Um, it's basically around phase shift. Phase shift of inductive loads and capacitive loads. Well, let's look at the diagram. We have the black line here, which is the uh, voltage, negative, positive peak. The red line would be an inductive load and the green line uh, a capacitive load and the green light line would be an inductive load. So what happens? We have the voltage peak here and we see in a capacitor the current peak comes before the voltage peak or let me start in another way if we have a, an, a, a resistive load a, a resistor like for example a, a large heater or something like that current is at maximum when voltage is at maximum we don't have any uh, phase shift between voltage and current but as soon as we have capacitors or inductors, uh, voltage and current are not in sync with each other. So if we have the voltage peak here, the capacitive current comes at peak level before the voltage because the capacitor has to charge up, so it's empty, let's say here. It charges up very quickly because in the first moment it is empty and it takes up most of the current and then it gets full saturated with electrons and the current drops while the voltage is still rising but it cannot take up more electrons or more charge for the inductor it's the opposite we go up with the voltage and the con uh, inductor first has to build up a magnetic field. So that takes a little time. So an inductor, if you uh, connect it to a fast rising voltage, uh, in the first moment there is almost no current. And then when the uh, the magnetic field builds up, it gets to, goes to a maximum current, but then the voltage is already dropping and so the current drops too, but it's, it lags behind the voltage, while the capacitor is ahead of the voltage with its current. So that may sound a little bit complicated, let's look at it in another way. Okay, let's look at it on my oscilloscope screen. It's in XY mode and we have on the horizontal uh, we have a voltage and vertical we have current. So if, my, if I take my probes and I make a short, we have a lot of current and no more voltage because uh, it's a current limited power supply my tester here and if I open that we have a lot of voltage but no current so for the first try I'm taking a resistor and we get this image here so that means voltage and current are in phase they rise at the same moment we go from top right to bottom left so when most uh, when the maximum of voltage is there there is also the maximum current okay let's take a capacitor that one it's a 100 microfarad capacitor and you see we get a circle more or less that means we get a voltage 
and current are almost 90 degrees off if it would be perfectly well it is maybe it's a, a problem of the vertical and horizontal scale but it's almost 90 degrees off so we have a maximum current when there is no voltage and we have a maximum voltage when there is no current so that creates us a circle now for an inductor I have this little transformer here and it looks like that one it's a little bit different but phase shift goes to the other side so now the question is what's bad with reactive power why do we have to compensate that and eliminate it well let's say the blue line is our voltage the red line is our current here in this case it lags behind the voltage so it's an inductive current it's 90 degree uh, of phase of the of the voltage and the black line is our power um, let's take an extreme example let's say our current here is 180 degree uh, uh, off from the voltage so it's something that doesn't happen with, with uh, inductive or capacitive loads but just as an example we have a large positive voltage and a large negative current power is zero so they cancel each other out a positive current a negative a positive voltage a negative current the product is zero um, that is constant through all this we have now here a negative voltage a positive current here we have no voltage and no current it's always zero um, that means in this extreme case we have a lot of current but we have no usable power so our wires get hot the electricity company has to produce a lot of current that flows through the wires but there is no useful uh, power so that means if you have a lot of inductive loads or capacitive loads uh, you need much thicker cables for everything you you get a higher electricity bill for something you you can cannot use um, and the closer this um, phase shift here is to zero or the closer we are to a, a resistive uh, load uh, it's better for well everyone it's better for the power consumer because he doesn't need so uh, large wires um, it's better for the power producer because it he doesn't need to produce power for nothing so yeah that's the reason why we do that and that's how a reac reactive power compensation unit looks like at least it looked like in 1974 we have a lot of large fuses 100 amps each three phases makes three fuses and right below the fuses we have capacitors three times 132 microfarad Here we have the relay box. There is one relay per capacitor, um, triple pair. Um, yeah, and that's how the relay looks when it is out of its case. We see there is the input, goes through the fuse, goes to the underside of the relay. And then on the top side, we have the three large wires that go to the capacitor and each capacitor can be 
connected to the grid or not. And I can tell you this relay is really loud. I was just a little bit startled when I heard it the first time. I didn't expect it to make such a clunk. And here is the most interesting part. It's a controller. It has a, a, a switch for automatic or manual control. It has a dial for current and the desired cosinus phi. The, uh, phase shift that should be achieved. Here are the switches that go to the individual relays, so it has more than only four switches. It is made to handle bigger uh, appliances. And what it does, it measures the phase shift between voltage and current and connects capacitors whenever they are needed or disconnects them when the inductive load is getting lower. And that's one of the capacitors. It's, as I said before, 3 times 132 microfarad for 400 volts mains voltage. And if we measure them, we get 220 microfarads. And we measure, I measure that between all the three uh, connectors there and we always get 212, 220, something around that. Well, why is that? The capacitor said it's 132. Why do we have more? Okay, the story with the capacitors is relatively simple. We have these three terminals here and there is one capacitor connected like this, another one is connected like this and the third capacitor is connected like this. So, or if we draw it in a three phase, phase one, phase two, Phase 3, we have one capacitor here, we have one here, and we have one here in a triangle. Okay, so each one has 132 microfarads. If we look at this, if we put our multimeter here, and I measure like here, and here we measure 132 microfarad parallel to these two uh, capacitors in series. So what happens? That's also 132, 132. Two capacitors with the same capacity in series gets us half the capacity. So these two in series are 66 microfarad. Now we have 132 microfarad parallel to this 66 microfarad, which are two 132 microfarad in series. So half the capacity here, but this one adds to that one. And we get 192 microfarad and we get that result no matter where we uh, measure we can measure here we get the same we can measure here these two we get the same so we are almost on 200 microfarad and that's more or less exactly what i measure and now we get to the my favorite part of this whole system, it's the mechanical sequencer. It's an electric motor driving a rotary switch, uh, or a rotor that pushes switches. We have 15 switches. 
and in this case they turn on one after the other as you can see here i added some leds to it there are two switches that provide some kind of clock i don't know why they are necessary because the whole thing is not digital and all the others are just uh, turning on in a sequence 